Welcome to Brew Build, your place for DIY home improvements. I'm Paul. Well, I finally get to install some of these pavers, so let's get to this. Tools and items needed. Patio pavers, sand, gravel, a plate compactor, concrete mix, a concrete saw, an angle grinder, three quarter inch PVC pipe, one by fours, a string level, four foot box level, a torpedo level, a tape measure, a rubber hammer, a wonder bar, a carpenter square, wheelbarrow, a shovel, a small shovel, a rake, a stucco trowel, a London trowel, concrete stain, a bucket or two, a marker, knee pads, gloves, and your personal safety gear. I'm installing these pavers a little bit differently because I'm putting in the perimeter edging first using the concrete blocks from the old retaining wall. And I discovered like most projects, all the time goes into the prep work. So before I start putting these pavers down, let me show you all the prep work I had to do. On the Bruce scale, technical ability I rate between a novice and an expert. You need to be able to make sure that all your measurements and prep work are correct before you place the pavers. Physical ability I rate as hard. Individually, the pavers don't weigh much, but together they add up. Also, you will be on your knees a lot. Hey, so I've been working on the final phases of getting this backyard ready to put down the pavers. You need some type of edging to hold the pavers in place. I'm using these bricks that came from the old retaining wall. You can also use plastic edging that is designed to be used with the pavers, but I wasn't quite sure how to use that with the retaining wall. I'm wanting the top of the brick to be flush with the pavers, which is why I need to place the edging in first, because they will hold in the gravel and the sand for the pavers. What I've been doing is the string here is the same height as the slab. I'm wanting the pavers to be about an inch and a half lower than the slab, so I've been measuring from the string down to these bricks, an inch and a half, and then adjusting the height with the sand if I need to raise it and then I just check the level to make sure it's not tilted in any direction. This distance here allows five of the eight inch pavers to fit in here without any cutting. I design all the distances for the pavers based on hole widths. For example, it is the distance of 15 pavers from the house to the fireplace slab. Since the slab is already done, I'm basing my measurements from the slab to get my edging in the correct spot. You can see how I poured the slab in number three of the Backyard Makeover project series. That's why it's important to get these last bricks in the right spot so I don't have to cut too many of these guys down. Once I get all the brick edging in place, I'll take the plate compactor and start compacting down the gravel around the edging. I also added a new concrete edge to the existing slab. The slab edge was in pretty poor shape and I needed a flat straight edge for the pavers. I also redid the stucco drip screed because the original one was shot. I'll post a video on that later. I used concrete with a smaller 3 8 inch gravel or concrete repair depending on how big of a space I needed to fill. After installing the edging for the pavers, I needed to get the base ready. You need a solid compacted base layer for pavers. I'm using 3 quarter inch crushed gravel on top of the broken concrete. I found purchasing the large bulk bags the most economical. They're a third of a cubic yard and they weigh almost 1100 pounds. If you have a pickup truck, it makes the process fairly easy because they can forklift the bag into the back of your truck at the store. Then when you get home, use a shovel and a wheelbarrow to get the gravel into your backyard. Other options would be to have the gravel delivered or to use the 50 pound bags of gravel. Keep in mind that a third of a cubic yard would only cover 36 square feet at a three inch depth. So a 10 by 10, 100 square foot area would require almost one cubic yard of gravel or three bulk bags or 60 50 pound bags weighing close to 3,000 pounds. Which is why I reused as much broken concrete as I could as part of the base layer. I have a playlist on this project if you want to see more on how I demo the backyard. Alright, let me show you how I prepared and compacted the paver base layer. The first thing I needed to do was finish compacting the 4 inch layer of gravel. To do this, I would spread the 3 quarter inch gravel out using a shovel and a rake, then run over it with the plate compactor. 
After a few passes, I would then use a level to check that I had the proper slope. I discovered rather quickly that the plate compactor works much better when you have gas in it. I thought I remember seeing some videos where the guys were using like a 2x4 to spread out the gravel evenly. I wasn't having that much success doing that. And I found what was working for me was to use this manufactured piece of wood. So it's got a nice straight flat edge. And then just putting a level on it. Grading the slope from the house to the slab. So this side needs to be a little bit higher. And then I just take a shovel, grab some gravel and fill in these areas that need it. So I just want a nice, even, flat surface We're going from that level down to that level. That way when it rains, the water should flow that way and into the drain or out to the side yard that way. So I'm going to grab some more gravel and we'll fill in some of these gaps. After filling in the low areas with more gravel, I would use a rake to help level it. You want to use the top side of the rake so you don't dig into the gravel. Once I'm done spreading the gravel, I'll then run a plate to pack it over the area a few times, then check the level and for the low spots again. Repeating the process until I'm happy with the grading of the base layer for the papers. The patio pavers will line up height-wise with a new edge I poured at the house. So the compacted gravel needs to be three and a quarter inches below the house slab edge. That will give me the required space of one inch of sand and the thickness of the paver. But I want them to be an inch lower around the fireplace. So the gravel needs to be four and a quarter inches below the fireplace slab. So I thought I would share with you a little mistake I made pouring the slab. I used 2x4s for the side form, which generally would be good, but when I put the sand in it kind of came up against the form. So some of this area is less than 3.5 inches. And then the pavers, the slab is the same height as the slab of the house, and I wanted the pavers to be about an inch and a half lower so any water would not get up into this area. Um, so doing that I realized that I had to dig down a bit further and that started eroding away some of the sand and gravel that was underneath the slab so I decided to get some concrete patch and patch this up. The last area that I need to check the gravel height is along the back edge. It needs to be three and a quarter it looks like we're about three and a half. So I need to add a bit more gravel along the edge and run the compactor over it again. Then I'll actually put some of the pavers down on top of some one inch PVC pipes to check that everything fits in properly between the slab and the edging. All right, looks like we have this area done. We are getting close to being able to put these guys down. One of the pallets of the rectangular pavers that we got such the great deal on are pretty much the same color, so we decided to stain some of them to have a little more variety. We used a dark brown semi-transparent concrete stain. We also sprayed the footings for the columns while we were at it. I ended up getting a great deal on three different sizes of patio pavers. Uh, so this is basically 8 by 8 inches, this would be 8 by 16, and then this is 8 by like 5 and a half. So three of these make up one big one and two of these make up one big one. So from the amount I've purchased for every one of these I use, I have to use two of these, 
and I have to use six to seven of these. So knowing that, I've been on the computer trying to figure out how to lay them out, and then it came out here in this area, and I laid them out last night to kind of get an idea, and I found it very challenging to do that. So we decided that we're actually gonna have them lined up in this direction, and when we get to that edge, we're gonna line them up in that direction. I've only done pavers one other time, and that was a very small project and a long time ago. So I'm not quite sure how much the sand will compensate for the unevenness in the gravel. So I just want to make sure that this area is perfectly flat and just sloping slightly how I want it for the drainage. So I'm going to pick these back up, run the plate compactor over here again, might add a little more gravel in the middle, and then get the sand down and start laying these pavers. Yeah! These pavers line up with the side of the house and will be the edge where I start placing the pavers. They are sitting directly on the gravel and they will be redone when I work on the side yard. Let's put down some sand. I'm using 3 quarter inch plastic PVC pipes as my guide to level the sand. They have an outside dimension of 1 inch. Once you get the sand laid down, start spreading it out using a straight 1 by or 2 by piece of wood as a float. Now that I have the sand filled and leveled, I'll carefully remove the pipes and fill in the gaps with more sand. Once that is done, then I can put the pavers down. Try to get it as even as possible. Finally got some pavers down. It's exciting to see that. I'm going to check some measurements and check level and check squareness with the house before I continue on. Actually, I'm going to go eat first before I do it much more, so I'm pretty hungry. So I made a slight mistake laying the pavers out. When I did it on the computer, I used one of these between the house and the column support. And you're probably wondering why I didn't just start in that corner because that would have been a whole lot easier. My idea was to have the pavers line up with the other side of the house by the kitchen because it's a much longer run, so I'll have to cut less pavers. That's why I started on the other end of the walkway. Anyways, I'm gonna have to pick that back up and I'm gonna have to use one of these within each line and then once I get past the column support, then I'll probably change the direction of these small pavers so it staggers the lines this direction. So we get to do it again. Having this corner square is crucial because these pavers need to go in parallel to the house. So I ran this string line that is parallel to the house and it measures 107 and a quarter inches from the back of the house, which is the distance of 13 pavers. So using a square, a tape measure and the string line, I am now confident that this corner is square and I'm ready to continue on. Okay, if my measurements are correct, 
I should be able to put two of the eight inch pavers in this gap. I'm doing about a three foot section at a time, removing only one pipe, then placing the pavers up to the second pipe, then repeating the process. I found that this stucco float works great for leveling off the sand after taking the pipes out. I'll then make stacks of pavers in the quantities of one big, two small, and six square ones. It takes about five stacks to do a three foot by 10 foot section. I'll also try to get some color variety in as well. Once the stacks are done, then I'll start placing them. Well, I'm gonna take a break. I think we're about halfway done. I'm gonna have to cut some of the pavers back in that corner there, a little bit tight fit. There's a few spots that are a little bit higher than the pavers, um, especially the big ones seem, I don't know if they're a little bit taller than the other ones, but I'm hoping when I run the plate compactor over it, that that will even that area out. Hey, hit that like button and subscribe to Brew Builds to see more DIY videos like this one. I'm gonna call it a day and get back at it tomorrow. So I'm ready to start laying some more pavers down this morning. You know, I was a bit tired last night, so I was curious of how much weight I actually picked up. So I weighed these. These are 12 and a half pounds. The big one is 25 pounds, and then the smaller ones are about eight pounds. So for one set of one, six, and two of the small ones, that's about 108 pounds. And then one section that I was doing was about five sets, so that's 540 pounds times how many sections I did so that was quite a lot of weight I picked up yesterday Oh, and also I did go for a mountain bike ride in the morning So that might have had something to do with why I was so tired Also, these pavers are glove destroyers. The bottom edge is so sharp that it just tears these gloves apart So I've been adding some duct tape to the fingers to give them a little more life. I think this pair is just about done So back to these pavers here I'm really thankful that I purchased a plate compactor instead of renting one because it gives me the ability to kind of touch up areas that need it. I noticed I was kind of moving the gravel around when I was walking around this area. And I do need to check some levels in some spots or seem some low spots. I'm gonna add some more gravel, take the plate compactor over it, compact it down one more time, and then we'll get the sand down and start putting more pavers down. So let's get this thing fired up and get moving.
I'm going to continue working on this part behind me here. I'm hoping that the water will just kind of drain and flow to that side of the house when it rains. I need to put down the plastic pipe, put the sand down on top of it, level it out, and then I can start putting the pavers in. I know it's going to take me a little bit longer because I'm going to have to cut some of the pavers to make them fit, but I got my concrete saw, so hopefully that goes well. Once this is done, I'll go over to this lab area and continue laying the pavers over there. You know, one thing that's really nice is walking on these pavers now. It just feels so good to go from one side of the house to the other just walking on these pavers. I'll be really excited when it's completely done and then I can start working on other things in this backyard. Let's go. So as you can see, I ended up pulling the pavers back up in this area. There's a very obvious dip, so I decided to pull them back up. I'll put some sand down, re-level this area, and put the pavers back down. I think what happened was when I was trying to get the pavers in and I had to pound them with a hammer, I think that just kind of compresses everything down. I'll add some sand, get this leveled, and continue on. I kind of made myself some temporary shade. It definitely goes much quicker when you don't have to think about what bricks need to go where. So when I took them off, I just laid them on top of each other and put them back the same way and it definitely goes quicker. Well, it does look a whole lot better. A little low spot here, so I'm gonna pull it back out, try to fill that one. Hit that like button and subscribe to Brew Build. Hit that like button and subscribe to Brew Build. We are getting close to being finished. Just need to get the pavers down around the slab for the fireplace and barbecue. I cut the plastic pipes to fit in this area, which is why I'm doing it towards the end. Well, I'm at the stage where I need to start trimming some of these pavers to fit in these holes here. So these are really close, but I need to trim off like an eighth inch or a quarter inch. Even just taking off these bumps might make them fit in here. So I got these three to do here. I have to cut a corner out of one of the big bricks that will fit next to the uh, support for the column. And then a few other smaller ones, but I need to cut some angles out of the curved area. Once I get these in here and tight, then I'll finish that back row along the brick edge. Then I'll get the compactor out and I'll run it over before I put the sand down. I'm not quite sure if you're supposed to do it, but to me it makes sense to run the compactor when they can give a little bit to help hopefully level them out and even them with each other. 
once that's done then i'll put the sand down that will get into the cracks and once that gets compacted that kind of locks them in place so let me grab this brick go get it cut and then we'll fill in these spots mark the paper for cutting, I place it upside down, that way when I install it, the cut side will be on the outside against the concrete. Mark the side of the paper where it meets the paper underneath. Then use a carpenter square or rafting square to mark the lines around the paper. Just need to turn the water on for the concrete saw and let's cut this paper. I use an angle grinder to round the edges of the cut to make them smooth, giving them a more finished look. For the corner piece I needed to cut, I placed a large paver by the column support and marked the paver using a square up against the support as a guide. I need to cut both sides of the paver to make a square cut. Then use the grinder to make a nice 90 degree corner. Cool, this came out very nice. Use a small paver or wood wedges under the paver to hold it in place for marking the cuts. For the angle cut, I'm just eyeing it using the square as a guide. All right, let's see how this paper fits. So I just need to cut a few more for this area to be finished and have a couple that need to be cut in the corner of the house. I'll have to use a tape measure on this one since I can't fit the paper under the speckle lip of the wall. Alright, so let's mark it and go get it cut. Two of these pavers will need special cuts to get around the gas pipe that goes through the barbecue. For this round hole, I'm just eyeing how deep this cut needs to be for the paver to fit and marking it with a pen. It will look better if they're rounded, so I'll do multiple cuts with a concrete saw to try to achieve that. Cutting on the line, then flipping the paver over to square up the cut. Then take the angle grinder to smooth out the rounded corner. Going caveman style using hammer to round hole. 
sound like the Terminator. I'll be back. Okay, let's see if everything fits now. Just need to finish the back row behind the barbecue and fireplace area. Alright, quick video here. Check this out. All the patio pavers. I just finished this section over here. Had to cut little circles out for the pipes. Goes all the way down to here, and we have it going around the slab for the fireplace and barbecue. I got my nice curves going on here, and I only had to do one kind of special cut, L cut there. And, oh no! <laughs> I got two more to cut. <sighs> This plate compactor came with a rubber mat that attaches to the bottom of the plate. You need one if you're using a compactor on your patio pavers so it doesn't damage the surface of the pavers. This one attaches with Allen head screws. Okay, let's run the compactor around and help settle and level out the pavers. Before putting the sand down, I vacuum the cracks to get out any leaves and remove anything that shouldn't be in between the pavers. I decided to use sand with the pavers. There is a product that acts more like a grout, but I heard when it gets old it can start to chip out and is much harder to deal with. Sand just needs refreshing once a year and it should be fine. Spread the sand out on top of the pavers, working it into the cracks using a broom, moving the sand in all directions. Then take the plate compactor, run it over the pavers to work the sand into the cracks, blocking in the pavers. Sweep off the excess sand, then wash the pavers with a soft spray of water. Be careful that you don't wash the sand out of the cracks. Now enjoy your new patio. Alright, so I have finished putting down the patio pavers. Great to see this area finally done with the new patio pavers. I really like the results of it. Up next on Brew Builds will be the new patio cover or pergola. So be sure to subscribe to Brew Builds if you want to see this backyard remodeling project in its entirety.